That's right, this isn't clickbait. This is fully blown Windows OS running natively on an Android phone. But how? How is this possible? Well, keep watching, because we have a lot to talk about. Ever since the Quest 1, people wondered whether it was possible to natively run something like SteamVR on a Snapdragon chipset. And then of course the Steam Deck came out, and that made things even more interesting, as that can actually run virtual reality on it, and that's a pretty damn small computing device. So it seemed like more of a yes than ever. I've been thinking, is there a way we can make this happen? Well. There is. This is Project Renegade. And as a matter of fact, it's actually nothing new. The first version of Project Renegade that I can find is all the way back from June 27th of 2020. So what is it? Well, it's a UEFI firmware targeting mobile devices with a Qualcomm Snapdragon processor and aiming to provide a usable EDK2 UEFI environment for these devices. It can be used as a boot manager for multi-booting mainline Linux, Android, and optionally Windows for certain chipsets. That might mean nothing to you. So let me try to explain in simpler terms. If you've ever rooted an Android phone, you'll know that they have something that we call a boot image. This is what comes before your phone boots into the Android OS. But of course, this boot image cannot boot UEFI firmware, which is what Windows is based on. Well, Project Renegade provides you with something I'm going to call an imposter boot image that will give you a full UEFI bootloader within that boot image. While your phone still thinks it's booting into Android, it's actually booting into this custom Renegade bootloader, allowing you to boot natively into UEFI operating systems, such as Windows on ARM, which is exactly what we're using today. Windows on ARM exists because, well, Windows creates tablets and those tablets have ARM SOCs, so therefore we can now take that Windows on ARM system and throw it onto basically anything else. However, it's actually not that simple. At this point, you may be wondering, is this something that you could do yourself? Should you put it onto your phone? And for a multitude of different reasons, this is where I'm going to have to stop you. And this is also why this will not be a fully blown tutorial on how to put Windows on your phone. There are a few reasons why this isn't something you might want to do, especially on your daily driver. First of all, it's actually not currently available right out of the box for a lot of devices. You need to do quite a bit of tinkering to get it working on a device that isn't on the list. This is because you will somehow need to find the Windows on ARM drivers for your device, while the devices that are there on the Project Renegade list have ready-made packages with all the drivers that they need. Second of all, while it may have been made a lot easier throughout the years, it's still not something that I would call a beginner level project. In fact, I actually bricked a phone trying to install it about a year ago. You see, if you're not comfortable with repartitioning your phone's partitions, which can go horribly wrong, fixing multiple blue screens and doing quite a bit of troubleshooting, then you might want to stay away from this altogether. That being said, if this is something you would like to attempt, I will leave the GitHub link for it down below. They do have that list of devices that the project is known and tested on, and a table showing you what works and what doesn't, because certain things just don't work, like for example, audio on this phone. It does also allow for dual booting Android and Windows once you shrink your Android partitions. So you can keep your phone working as an Android phone as well. Okay, enough of that explanation. What do we have here and what works and what doesn't? Well, this is the Xiaomi Mi 8, and it's actually quite perfect for this project, as I was aiming for something that would be similar to the Quest 1. Now, this isn't identical, but it's actually a little bit more powerful, so that gave me more hope. It's got a Snapdragon 845 chipset with 6 gigs of RAM, while the Quest 1 has a Snapdragon 835 chipset with 4 gigs of RAM. So if this can't do what we want it to, the Quest 1 surely couldn't. This is unfortunately where we get to the disappointing part. While Windows on ARM was made to emulate x86 programs, and it does it quite well, allowing me to install things like Steam and Steam VR on it, first of all, I got Virtual Desktop installed. My Quest would connect, but Virtual Desktop didn't like the Adreno GPU drivers, which, I mean, understandable. <laughs> this means it wouldn't show the desktop in VR, which was quite disappointing as I was thinking I could have a pocket PC and have it show up inside virtual reality just like that, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, that doesn't work. Secondly, SteamVR did not want to launch. Well, I mean, it did, after a solid 15 minutes, but after that, it threw up an error. Without any headset connected whatsoever, SteamVR would actually turn on, but of course no headset was connected, so that wasn't entirely difficult. But once I connected a Quest through Virtual Desktop, the entire thing would just go downhill, and the device would overheat quite a bit. I wasn't going to give up that easily though. I installed the Pico Streaming Assistant. Error. 
unsupported drivers. I tried installing the Oculus software, error, with no explanation this time. But to be honest, I kind of don't need one at this point. <laughs> I tried ALVR, but the installer wouldn't even open. So unfortunately, it seems like running VR on a Snapdragon 845 is just a terrible idea that would never work. Or at least not without support from the applications that we're actually trying to run, which is fair enough. But at least we tried right? Well, no, not good enough. So I decided to find out how powerful this thing truly is. And if we did have support for SteamVR on it, how well would it run? So let's jump into some games. And this is where the surprising part actually happens. First of all, I tried an older but quite popular title, CSGO, and it actually worked. Surprisingly, quite well. Using a trick I found in a different video from Project Renegade, I windowed the application, reduced the resolution, and then used magnifier in order to increase it to make it look like it was running full screen, since you can't actually change the resolution of your device in Renegade. Surprisingly, it ran quite well. I'd say it was maybe sort of playable, depending on what kind of person you are. After that, I decided to really stress test this thing and tried to run The Forest. Well, that got me just about as far as the menu. As the menu itself ran at about 2 FPS, I couldn't change the resolution and it wouldn't take my custom resolutions. So that's as far as we got there. Then I tried Demio PC Edition, as I thought that would be a pretty cool thing to have on a phone, but unfortunately that didn't even load into the game. I tried Five Nights at Freddy's 2 on it, and it actually worked really really well and was perfectly playable. But considering that application is already available to download on the Play Store, it's not exactly something you'll be installing Windows on your phone to play. Then we downloaded a bunch of other games, like Left 4 Dead 2, Cuphead, and Subnautica. And you can see Beat Saber there as well, but for obvious reasons that actually, no no no, Beat Saber did launch, but of course no headset connected so it didn't work. Left 4 Dead 2 I had pretty high hopes for, but unfortunately, while it was smooth in the menu, when we launched into the game, it crashed. And I tried again and it crashed again, so I assumed that that game just wouldn't run, which is unfortunate because it was an older title, so I thought it would run nicely. Then we tried Cubhead, and Cubhead ran at like maybe 3 FPS, so that was utterly useless and you probably couldn't play it comfortably. That and when we tried to launch the game, it crashed. So I'm seeing a little bit of a trend here. Subnautica, I didn't even bother launching after the last few failures as that is a pretty demanding game, so I can only imagine what would happen if we launched that. So as you can see, playing games on this isn't necessarily the best unless you find some games that genuinely work, but I mean, at least they turn on. And on a more powerful device, maybe. So all in all, what was the purpose of this? Well, we installed SteamVR on something that could technically be called the equivalent of a Quest 1. And I guess we have our proof here. In its current state, right now, no, you could not run PC VR on mobile hardware, or at least this kind of mobile hardware, as certain laptops will actually allow you to do it pretty well. But currently, right now, running PC VR on something like a Quest, even if we do manage to unlock the bootloader, is not going to be possible. And I know, wow, this won't be a big surprise for a lot of you out there, as, I mean, it kind of makes sense. PC VR struggles on many modern computers, let alone on an Android phone. But I thought that maybe I could use AMD FSR to just completely destroy the resolution and have it run that way, and at least have it be a fun project. But unfortunately, it didn't run. However, it was still a really fun project, and at least what we got out of this is the fact that you can run Windows on a phone, fully blown Windows with x86 programs. That absolutely blows my mind, and at least what I got from this is the fact that I can now play PC games on the fly in my hand. Well, certain PC games, as you saw, certain actually still really good PC games ran pretty well, which is completely unexpected. But with that being said, I'm Mystical, and thank you so much for checking out this video. I know it was a little bit of a different one. I do these little projects behind the scenes constantly, and I don't make them into videos because I just don't think people will be interested. So I guess I'm about to find out. Are people interested in me merging tech and virtual reality together, and are you interested in future projects like this? As, again, this is actually my hobby. This is what I truly enjoy doing, and recording news every single day is not feasible, especially when virtual reality doesn't have news on the daily. Either way, if you like this one, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you want to see a full tutorial on this, uh, let me know, because I'm thinking of starting up a second tech channel that I will record to alongside virtual reality content, so I could upload something like that there. Either way, that was today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are not yet part of the community, check out the Discord down below, check out the Reddit, and thank you so much to the lovely names going off on my right. Those are my Patreons. You guys help me out a ton, seriously, right now, with all the builds 
skills and everything. Thank you so, so much. With all that being said, if you want to be notified about your content coming up on the channel, then make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.